Um, I actually decided to do a walkthrough of how I create a junk journal. Um, this is more geared to people who aren't really crafty. Um, I honestly, I'm kind of crafty, but I haven't done a lot since college. It's just watching YouTube. Um, I really got into it and I just want to show for the non-crafty people that it's really not that hard to make one. Basically anyone can do it if you want to. So. Or I remember I mentioned I was going to do Frosty, but we actually went to Savers, which is a thrift store over the weekend, and my husband found me Rudolph. So I'm actually going to do Rudolph instead. So the first thing I do is I get nine sheets of scrapbook paper. So these are pads of scrapbook paper that you can get at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. These are from Michael's. They are normally $19.99 a pad. Each pad is pretty thick. It comes with 48 sheets. Never pay $19.99 for a pad. There's always coupons. Michael's always has sales, like a 40% off coupon or a 50% off coupon. Um, right now, <clears throat> like I got these, I think I paid five bucks for each of these. It's just whatever the day of the sale was. Pay attention to Michael's, download the app. You never need to pay $19.99 for one of these pads. So what I do is I go through and I pull out nine sheets of paper uh, that I think is appropriate or that I like. And so these are the nine that I'm going to do. So why I say nine is I do three signatures. Um, I will show you what I mean by signatures later, but that's like the grouping in the book. So each signature will have three sheets of scrapbook paper. So that is my first step is I pick the scrapbook paper I like. And I have to say, this is my absolute favorite. Look at these little red dots. It's very appropriate. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. She with little round dots. Love it. So that is the first step. The next step is to pull apart your book. Now, I know um, this might be upsetting to some people when you destroy a book. But to me, this is a vintage book. I got it at a thrift store, most likely. Eventually, it would have made it to the dumpster if no one bought it. Um, they don't keep at thrift stores. They do have turnover times, and if something doesn't move in a certain amount of time, absolutely, they throw it in the dumpster. So, I'm rescuing it, essentially, is my frame of mind. Um, I can understand buying a brand new book, um, tearing it apart. That might be upsetting. I definitely would not do that. But I consider this upcycling, so I have absolutely no problem pulling apart this vintage book. So what you want to do is you want to pull this apart and when it's a vintage one it's usually easier um, because it's loose from age just use a little arm muscle and pull it apart. I don't have arm muscle but oops that's okay I was gonna cut that spine off anyway but I should have did a little job a little better job pulling it apart and this is where hold on one second this is where pliers come in handy. So the reason I'm having an issue is there are two staples that staples the book together. So I need, let me see the second part. This is the messy, messy part. Can I get, there we go. That's not a good job either. Okay. So I want to work these staples out. If I would have worked the staples out ahead of time that might have pulled apart a little easier. Because I don't want to damage the page. This little cardboard part, I don't mind damaging in it. But I don't want to damage the page. Alright. That's being difficult. Maybe I'll fast forward this place, this part. Okay. Gosh darn it. Okay. There we go. Work that staple out. I'm going to make a new binding, so that's why I don't care that I'm not keeping that part of the book. Let's find the other staple. Where is the other staple? It's right there. I'm trying to expose it. Don't want to rip the actual pages. <clears throat> there we go. There's one state. Listen, this is just being a difficult book. I've actually pulled them up. Last couple books pulled apart. No issues. Of course, the one that I videotape is the most difficult one. There we go. 
get rid of that. As you can see, it, the pages are still good. So let me pull, I got a little trash box over here. So just take your scissors and cut that off. I only want, they don't want that anyway. Okay, so you got your front and your back. Keep those two, because I'm keep those, definitely using those. <clears throat> Alright, so if you've ever pulled a book apart and seen the book binding or if as a kid you ever made a book in school. So this is called one signature because you see all the page let me find the middle. So what happens is there we go, there's the middle. So the way the book works is so it's one sheet folded together and so that is a signature so this book had one signature and so what we're gonna do is divide it into three signatures the only bad thing is when you do that <clears throat> let me just cough for a second excuse me <coughs> all right I'm keeping these pages as they are because the way that I bind this book I am going to sew the pages. I'm going to clip them right here. Okay? So the pages are going to get out of order. Now, if you were to bind it where you do like rings, you could keep the pages in order because you would have each page individually. But I'm keeping them together so the pages will get out of order. Let me show you what I mean. So I try to keep it in order, but when you keep the binding this way, it's impossible because this. So this, these pages are consecutive, but now these pages aren't. I don't know how to explain it, but hopefully you see what I mean. So like this is page one, but page one is, where is it connected to? Bad example. Why page one, what is page one connected to? Page one is not connected to anything. Okay. Page two is connected to the second to last page. Page three is, do you see the same? Okay, I'm not explaining it very well. But long story short, when you bind it the way that I bind it, the pages are out of order. But honestly, it's a junk journal. You're using it to keep track of stuff. You're not using it because you want to read Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer 20 billion times. You're not, you're not actually going to read the story. You're just going to enjoy the pretty pictures, the pretty Christmas pictures that are accenting your junk journal. Does that make sense? If you wanted to keep it in consecutive, if you wanted to maintain the integrity of the story, then you would need to do a, the, a binder, a ring binder method of binding, and I'm not doing that. I'm doing, oh shoot. There we go, sorry, motion activated light. So anyway, I make three signatures. I'm doing, this is like my worst video ever. Hitting my nightstand, not getting my thoughts out clearly. <sighs> Let me take a breather and start over. I'm going to have three signatures. So I am going to take these apart. Don't you know. So I'm going to keep this in the front. Why? Usually they come apart pretty easily. What is this connected to? I know what it is. See? It's glue. That Usually that comes off no problem. All right, that's fine. What about the others? There we go. There we go. I want to keep them together though. Okay, so that's one page. Let me go back. I'm trying to keep this in order. Second page. Third page. Even though it's two pages together, I'm calling it one page. Fourth. Fifth. And sixth. Okay, so there are six pages in semi-order. Six pages. How did I lose the first one already? Oh, I had it backwards. Okay, so I have six pages, and I'm going to do three signatures. So that means two of these are going to go in each of my signatures. I'll show you when I get to that part. But now at this point, <clears throat> remember, next stage is... I had the scrapbook paper and so I am going to trim the scrapbook paper down it's going to be in the signature 
fold it in half. Fold it in half like this, but it's too tall. So before I fold it, make sure, first off, make sure the paper's facing how you want it. Oh, I want the Merry Christmas up. I want the reindeer up. That's that. Snowflakes, easy. Can't really do that one wrong. Okay, so I want them facing like this. They're going to be folded like this. But I need to cut them down. So I just take this book. I'm going to take the back side in case I get ink on it. And I'm just going to take a pencil. And I am going to just draw a line on each one, just a light line. So I know where to cut it on my paper cutter. I have a paper cutter. Um, I did not buy a paper cutter for this. I had a paper cutter forever. I use it in my eBay business. Um, well, I used to use it when I used to make my own. Used to make my own inserts. Don't need to do that anymore. I get inserts printed at Vistaprint. Vistaprint always has such good deals that it's way cheaper just to get inserts printed at Vistaprint. If you care about reselling, a tip there is they always have like sales on their business cards. So I would make an like a thank you insert and I just would use a business card, but I would change it around so it didn't look like a business card. It just basically said, thank you for your business, blah, 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 blah. But I use it on their in their business card format and they're always like 50 to 75% off of their business card costs. So really it's so cheap. It's cheaper just to have this to print to it than print it on your own printer, if that makes sense. I don't know how Vistaprint makes any money half the time because sometimes if you pay attention to their deals, you can get business cards and inserts ridiculously cheap. So yeah, that's what I use. But anyway, long story short, I have a paper cutter. You don't need a paper cutter. You absolutely could just be doing this line all the way across and just cut it with scissors. I like my paper cutter. All right, I'm gonna cut that real quick and I'll be right back. All right, I have the paper cut down to size. Now I'm just going to fold it and, you know, if you all were in kindergarten, you've all like done folded construction paper, very similar. So I just press it down and then I also just take, this is just like an embossing tool and I just press it down to give it just a firmer like crisp line um, if you don't have I you don't have one of these use a credit card just take your credit card and smooth it so it's just stays it's a lot flatter it seems like an unnecessary step but it really helps keeping keeping the um, signatures from being too bulky so all I'm going to do is oh this was upside down I really like I really like the scrapbook paper. Little ring. This is actually that's very funny. You see this? That's my nails. Isn't that hilarious? I did not do that on purpose. Oops, I almost forgot that. All right. So then, oh, I almost got three more. So, oh, I, I really love holly. I love holly bushes. When we bought this house, it has two holly bushes in the front. I love it. It was just so awesome. Um, did not buy the house because of that, but it was definitely a nice bonus. This is mistletoe. Let's see. And snowflakes, which is it's kind of snowing right now. Very funny. Um, if you ever watch, I, I have an Instagram. If you want to see me on Instagram, I do a lot of Insta stories. Um, and I always go on about the snow. And if anyone's like, why are you going on about the snow? We've had four snows this year. The only reason I go on and on about it is because... We normally don't get a lot of snow. So this year, four snows, um, 
before, usually snow don't, we don't get it till January so it's just a lot of snow so far that's all it's just a little surprising to me so put this to the side I got my nine um, I cannot speak English today my nine scrapbook pages I got my Rudolph pages and I, now I'm gonna make a couple other pages because I like to have um, it's a junk journal you want all kinds of different papers you don't want just scrap papers the whole I think the whole idea of when people started junk journals was the whole idea was they were reusing vintage papers and so I collect all kinds of different papers to reuse in this junk journal yes I have new papers just because they're beautiful but I'm also going to intermingle some vintage papers so let me grab some and I'll show you what I mean this is ledger paper I picked up at an estate sale, or actually my sister picked this up for me at an estate sale. I pulled out three sheets. I want three sheets for, yep, there's three sheets. I have three signatures, so one sheet for each signature. Again, I'm just going to take this little board, take my pencil, oh, I keep hitting my tripod, sorry just so I know where to cut it. I actually need to do I'm, I need to do this side because I cut from the left, not the right. All right. So I'll trim that in a second. And then the other thing is for each signature, I like to have envelopes so they can use as pockets. And so I have a whole bunch of just plain old envelopes. These are white, I wish I had red making do with what I got I just have white um, these were just old envelopes from Christmas cards actually um, that I got in an estate sale the cards were generic not going to use them threw the cards away but kept the envelopes so what I do is I'm actually using bigger ones for this I've already made these so this is two envelopes put together so you have a pocket and a pocket and then when you incorporate it into the signature it's they're not going to be right next to each other. I'll show you what I mean when we get to that part. So I have three of these little pocket envelopes ready for this journal. Remember, three signatures, three pockets. So how did I do that? Very simple. All you do, take two envelopes. And listen, if they were used, even better because you're recycling. But unfortunately, I didn't have any envelopes. Um, I haven't gotten any Christmas cards this year. So just take the flap and tuck it in. Tuck the flap in like that very easily. And then you only need to glue. You could lick it. I'm not licking it. I've seen too many horror movies of crap that's in glue. Not just the Seinfeld episode. There's a really, I cannot, there's an 80s scary movie where like she licked the envelope and then a bug came out of her tongue, which I realized it was a scary movie, but I can't get that out of my mind. So nope, not licking envelopes. Just put a little glue down. And then there you go. You don't need to worry about doing it the inside flap. It's not going to come out now that the outside is sealed. You see what I'm saying? Now you have an easy flap. Like I said, if you have an old envelope to reuse and it has like text and stuff on it, we're going to cover it up later, later with scraps, scrapbook scraps. So it doesn't matter if it has writing on it. We can fix that later. Quick, easy envelope. All right. Get this out of the way. And then the other thing I do. Um, I would also, at this point, I would use regular, like, copy paper, um, that I tea stain. So all this is, is white copy paper. For whatever reason, it wouldn't feed through my printer. This is paper that, you know how, like, sometimes when you print something, a couple extra comes out. You don't really want to reuse it again because it'll jam your printer. I save all those, and I just, not, I tea stained it. All I did was dip it in a container of tea and then um, let it dry. And it comes out the antique look. This is, was new white paper, now it looks like antique. -y. And so I would normally fold that and add that to my junk journal because it's really fun to write on. It's really, I love writing on this. But um, this junk journal is specific to a vacation that I went on. And so what I like to do um, when I'm making vacation journal, junk journals is I keep all the paper scraps from my vacation and I want to incorporate those paper scraps into that trip. And so this trip I happened to get this newspaper from Silver Dollar City. 
So I'm gonna cut this down into paper sizes. And then I also, let's see what else I can use. What do I wanna use? So our hotel gave us a calendar. So yeah, I'm going to incorporate that. So look, I fold that and it's blank on this side so I can journal on that side and then keep the cool calendar on that side. This was our tickets. I'm actually, yeah, same thing. Fold that down. I got two of them. So right now, right off the bat, I got three pieces of paper that I can journal on the inside. Three pieces of paper, three signatures. Perfect. Let's see if there's, I want to add any more. Let's see if I have threes. All right, so this was, this was the map of the hotel. Um, I don't know that I want to cut it down because it's a nice map. So we'll leave that as is for now. That was just, I don't, okay. I got three already. We'll keep those three. Okay. And then the next part is I also want to add this to the signatures. And so what I will do is take the back of the book just to, as a guide and see the best bet. So yeah, if I cut right across here, I'm gonna get the title with the date and I wanna keep that. And um, so it'll be a little shorter, like it's not, you know what I'm saying? Like when you fold it in half, when you fold it in half, it's way shorter than the book, but that doesn't matter. It just makes the pages unique. They don't all have to be the same size. Um, it just makes it unique. So what I'm gonna do, let me get this paper even. Ugh, newspaper. Luckily this is like a newspaper where the ink doesn't come off. You know the classic newspapers, do they even make them anymore? Um, my husband used to deliver newspapers. I used to deliver newspapers. Kids don't do that anymore, but that was the job you all wanted. we all wanted growing up was delivering papers. So, all right. I don't, that's just ads. Just gonna do one of the, that's just ads, ads. Okay, wait, that has Christmassy. All right, I want that one. All right. Oh, you're like, Jenny, what are you doing? I don't know, I think as I go, I just, a lot of stuff I just play it by ear. All right, so let's, let's line it up, cut that across. All right. Let me trim it and I'll be right back. Wait, I need to trim these two, don't I? They're just a little too long. So, you, you don't want them, like, lengthwise, I guess that's height. You don't want it too tall. So you gotta trim that. But it's okay if it's a different over here. See what I'm saying? No, you'll see when I'm done. Okay. See, this is why I call this like a tutorial for beginners because we're both beginners. <laughs> we're learning as we go. All right, trim that, trim that. Trim that. Okay, so I folded, so I have three sheets of just travel documents, three sheets of the newspaper from Salvador City, and then three sheets of journal, vintage journal ledger. Okay, so then the first thing I do is I'm gonna pick my favorite to be the first one we see, and I'm gonna do just Merry Christmas. So this is gonna be the first signature. So I take the Merry Christmas, and then I take my first Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and, um, he is too long, and I'll show you later, I do actually trim it. So why are these pages too long now? Remember, I cut off the golden spine, so there's like an extra uh, half an inch right here. Um, I'm leaving that because I want these pages intact. So I, was, I will cut off a half an inch right here. It'll butt up right here to the, to the print, so you're not gonna lose any of your wording. You're just gonna lose a little of your graphic but I do that after I get everything sewn in. So, or after I get everything built up like this. Or I could do it right now. Yeah, let's finish. All right, so then you have that, 
and then let's see what and then the order is whatever you want um, so each signature let me think about this each signature is going to have two of those two uh, okay I'm doing math and it's too early for math all right let's just do whatever we want so ledger paper um, let's do the envelope let's do let's do another one of these so remember I'm gonna have three scrapbook sheets in each one but I'm only gonna have one of the other stuff so two of those are gonna be in each one and then let's see let's do this let's do that next to it and then our last I want to end with that so then that ticket and then I want this to be our last let's see if I counted it right we got one two three scrapbook papers one of the ledgers two of the stories yep all right that's our first signature and then our next signature and then you take your Rudolph ledger paper another how do I want to do that let's do this ledger last of that Ugh. my hands are too cold the temperature is dropping why can I not get this to okay and then we need an envelope I don't believe we did one of these yet one of my tickets and then so basically whatever order you want but I always end and begin with one of the scrapbook papers so my second signature and I am keeping these in order I want this one two and three so then I have my third signature and there should only be two of these left and there is only two left so then what do I want? I want ledger. Let's do another scrapbook. No, yeah. Let's do this. Let's do the envelope. No, 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 wait. I still have one more of these. Oh, how do I want to do this? Let's do the envelope. The last. It's just whatever you're fancy. No rhyme or reason. It's your book. And then. I really like incorporating paper, like papers that I would have normally thrown away, like you know this calendar from vacation. I just, I just love that. So, and that's our third signature. So as you can see, the Rudolph pages are sticking out. So, um, oh, that's my bad. I just kicked. Oh my god, I'm so not used to this. Okay, so if you had scissors you'd want to cut straight across. I don't mind if it's sticking out a little, but this is a little too much. Well, you know I'm a vintage girl. So of course, I have vintage shears. So if you don't know what shear or um, fabric shears are, is if you've ever sewn back in the day, I think they still make these, but this is vintage. So you would cut the fabric with these and it would do like this triangle path pattern diamond pattern and then it helped stop the fabric from fraying and so that's do they call them pinking shears well whatever reason it's cutting a pattern so what i do is and you know what i probably should have did this before i did the book but i wanted to i don't want to cut too much so i am just going to go through and cut off half an inch and basically it's butting up to the print so I don't want to cut any of the print so I'm gonna do that real quick and then I'll come right back all right I'm done as you can see I trimmed off a half an inch on all the Rudolph pages and now it's and it has like I like the decorative look so these shears are amazing these are like 50 years old and they're still amazingly sharp so I guess whoever Whoever had them didn't sew that much. And so um, there's that. And let me throw these scraps away. That's, I don't need these. All right. So you got your back cover. And then you got your front cover. There we go. 
So now the next step is to make the one inch binding. All right, I'll be right back. All right, this is just like white poster board. I think it's a little thicker than the average poster board you get nowadays. Um, you can use cardboard, you can use chipboard, you use whatever you have handy. I had these handy. Um, this is cut down, I've used it numerous times. I used to sell comic books. And if you're familiar with comic books, when you sell them, you ship it in a plastic bag that has this white backer board and it prevents the comic books from being bent too much during travel. I had a couple left over and so this is when my hoarder is use my hoarder personality is useful. I sold comic books 20 years ago. How I still had one of these, I don't know. But guess what? Now I'm using it. So I I want to let's see. I think I want to do a one inch. Let's see how wide this is. Yeah, because I I don't want it too tight. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a one inch binding. So all I'm gonna do is I am going to cut this at one inch. Where's my pencil? And then, how, how big is this? One, one and one. All right, let me go. My thing is right over here. My paper cutter is right over here. inch piece of cardboard all right and so let me get these out of the way and so then to make your binding I use fabric I've seen youtubers use uh, washi tape I've seen youtubers use ribbon um, my sister used to make costumes for the girls when they were younger she used to enter them in beauty pageants and they'd always be holiday themed and so she gave me this box of scraps and you know I was gonna sell it but I turned it up keeping the scraps and thank God I did because now they're having a second purpose I, ha I did not trim this Holly, this is just Holly's scraps I guess she uses pinking shears too so I want you want enough to cover that you kinda wanna make it two inches because you want enough to cover this but you also want a little to cover cover the board but you don't want too much to cover the board because you don't want to cover too much of that so this is actually the perfect size two sides are already pinking shared but this side is not and so let me just pinking share it real quick is that what they're called pinking shears sewing shears I swear it's pinking shears but I am the queen of using the wrong word here we go and I can see like little holes in it from like the original seam I don't care this doesn't have to be perfect it just gives it character I'm using up fabric scraps that would have originally been thrown away see another upcycling another usefulness I didn't buy this this is just being reused so hey if you don't have any fabric but you have like an old shirt that is stained that you were gonna donate or um, as long as it's cotton I, I recommend cotton this is cotton so you had an old shirt or something that you were gonna donate but maybe it's not good enough to donate cut a piece off you can use it there's always something you don't need to buy anything for this project hopefully not because you have paper around your house you have glue around your house there's no reason to buy anything because um, I'm sure you have old books too so and turn Rudolph, make sure he's the right way, turn him upside down. Um, this is up, so then this is, oh, I don't want it sticking out a little. Let me trim that. I don't want that little sticking out. Okay. Then, oh, oh, there we go again. Sorry if you got, you're getting seasick. I hit my, why do I keep hitting my tripod? All right, so then, this was the scrap I was going to use. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Lay that down. So we're going to put glue it, glue it, and then glue it like that. Okay. It's slightly crooked. That's fine. That's fine. Story of my life. Okay. I just have 
this Reculations glue. I don't recommend it. I don't like it, but I'm using it up. The reason I don't like it is because it dries clear, but you can still see the glue underneath when you're using it on fabric. It works perfect on paper. It's just not made for fabric. It does steal it though. Um, it works. It's just not my favorite but again like I said I'm gonna use up what I have and then when I run out I will find I will use what everyone else uses everyone else uses fabric tech that's what I wish I had but I had a coupon I got this on sale so anyway just if you can get your glue to work nope now I just put too much glue on it I wasn't paying attention and I squeezed it too hard that's too I don't want it globby. So always have a rag handy for mistakes. Let me just wipe that. Too much glue. Oh shoot, I forgot the most important thing. Hold on. When you're working with glue, we're gonna let this sit and dry. I highly recommend so you don't accidentally glue your book to your workstation. Wax paper. Use a sheet of wax paper. Put wax paper underneath your project. That way when it dries, it won't stick to the, rat, the wax paper. If it sticks, it comes off very easily. Unlike, this is just poster board. So if I would have forgot, the glue is gonna soak through the fabric. So if I would have forgot, I would have glued this to my poster board. So anyway, wax paper. Again, you should have some in your kitchen. So there we go. Just press it down. All right, now, now I'm just going to take more glue and just put glue all over the fabric, close to the edge as possible. See? It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just fun. I like the aspect that I'm reusing stuff that I might have thrown away. So, take your book, make sure it's the right way. Um, don't butt it up like exactly like give it just you see how I have a little red showing let a little red show because when you close it if you butt it exact like too close it makes it difficult to close give it a little a little space so it has room to open and close like a hinge you know what I'm saying give it a little room so I always as long as a little red is throwing shoot shut blah 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 as long as a little red is showing through this this video is gonna be like 60 minutes by the time I'm done no one's gonna watch it but if you stick it out thanks all right so then I am I I could trim it so like it's perfect like maybe have a look because you want to pull a little over I don't trim it I, every it's I'm using it all like if it was longer I would have kept it all do you see what I'm saying maybe not Pull that forward, smooth it down, smooth it down. See how the glue starts showing through? You see how there's a glue swatch? So it's going to dry and it's still going to be dark. That's that's what I meant. Like I don't like how it's, um, it's hard to dry clear on fabric, I guess is the point. Because it's clear but you still see the glue stain. Does that make sense? But again, what is that? There's a cat down here. Okay. Press that up. And now, this is the point where you have to walk away and leave it for a day. I give it a day, or maybe tonight. We'll, we'll come back and check tonight to see how, to see how, how far, how far it's dried. Okay, so, see, it, you know, like that. It's okay, maybe. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna put a little more glue right there. Just pull it up once so it's not sticking completely. See, you got your bias right. It's not cover. I'm very happy. It's not covering up the R. I didn't use too much fabric. So on the binding, you see the, the glue. Um, making do with what we got. So, and you could probably use regular Elmer's glue. I don't know why you wouldn't be able to. Um, 
seriously, the majority of glue is has the same ingredients. The only thing that's nicer about this is it's supposed to dry clear. So if all you had was Elmer's glue, I'm pretty sure that would work too. So leave this on the piece of wax paper and let this dry. So I will come back later when it's dry. All right, so the glue has dried. So now I am going to show you how I sew in the signatures. But first, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I'm gonna use a grommet tool real quick and make a little hole in the back right here so I can attach an elastic to keep the book closed. So I got this at Michael's. It was kind of expensive. It was either $29.99 or $39.99, but I had a 40% off coupon, so never pay full price for anything at Michael's. There's always coupons. So, um, <clears throat> you don't have to do this step. I've seen a lot of people just close the books by um, tying a ribbon around it, or you can, you can use the elastic band without attaching it to the book. There's numerous ways to close it. I'm just eyeballing it like halfway in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. I could measure it out, but anyway, so there's the hole. And like, you could just hole punch it. You don't even need the grommet to enforce it. It's just a little extra decoration step. So, and then you just take the tool, squeeze it again to crimp it down. And there, it looks nice on both sides. And then I also, at the top of the spine, I also do another hole for a grommet. Um, a lot of people, like put decorative charms, they make tassels and all kinds of little beads and charms hanging off of their spine. Um, I haven't really got into that yet, but I do a grommet now in case I want to because it's hard. It would it would be hard to add it after the um, after the signature sewn are sewn in. So don't know that I'll ever actually add charms, but just in case I add an extra grommet right there. Um, sorry, right there. All right, so <clears throat> we got our signatures, and the first thing I do is I paper clip them so when I sew it in, the, the pages don't move around. So, just makes sewing in a little easier. So, just take some paper clips. And let me press that in. Okay. Where was that? So you, yeah. I'm gonna go to the middle of your signature. Paper clip that in. All right. <clears throat> and that's and then I'll make sure I have it the right way. Don't want to sew your signatures in upside down. All right. And then last signature. Okay. So a lot of people when they're sewing in the signature, they eyeball it. I will actually measure this so I get it in the right spot. If that I'll sh I'll show you what I mean in a second. <clears throat> All right, third signature. Okay, put those to the side. All right, so my spine is an inch long. I'm sorry, it's an inch wide, and it is eight, almost eight inches, almost eight inches long, not quite. And so I am going to sew it in three spots. So. I want to sew, I want to do right in the middle. So four would be right in the middle. And then I want to do two, and then I want to do six. So basically every two inches. So two, four, and six. Just, yeah, I'm marking it with pen. This is gonna be covered up by your signature. I could do it with pencil, but okay, there we go. So these are the lines for my signature. Oh my goodness. Okay. And then I have three signatures. So let me get to the inch. So I want it kind of like, oh my goodness. 
it's one inch. So in the middle and then half an inch and half an inch. See what I'm saying? So three spots, half an inch each. So the middle signature, first signature, third signature. See what I'm saying? This ink is smearing, ugh. But it's gonna be covered, it's okay. All right, that one. All right, put that to the side. So now I take each signature, and you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna wanna mark the, um, what do we decide? Okay, four, two, and six. Signature one. I'm gonna get that eight. Okay, so two, four, and six. This is so I know where I'm gonna be poking the holes later. Two, four, six. Okay. Um, and then that's the first signature. All right, so just to help with easier with sewing, you, you want to pre-poke your holes. You don't have to. Sorry if I'm sounding. I, I have a pad that I poke the holes on. Where, is, where did I put that pad? Oh my god. Okay. I took a couple magazines and I taped a piece of cardboard on top. Because otherwise, you're going to poke through your table and, and ruin your table. So, just take a couple old magazines. Use that for your base. And so... There are like book binding tools. I don't know what it's called. Where is it at? I um that pokes holes. Oh my god, I lost mine. That is gonna be like where did it go? I just had it the other day. So it's like called an all, like A W L, I think is what it's called. I don't have one of those. I don't have one of those. I have a, a bead reamer, so this is like because I used to do beading, so it's not sharp, but it pokes, but it pokes holes. It used to, it helps enlarge beads. This is what I use. If you had a big thick needle, you could use a big thick needle. You don't need to go out and buy something. So you want to just pre-poke these holes, like you want it on the seam, on the crease. So I just do one, two. I get that one through? No, I didn't. You really have to have muscle strength, and that's one thing I don't really have. Okay. All right, so now that is one. So like I said, if you don't have a bead reamer or an awl, just use a needle. you just do the if you poke the holes beforehand it just makes it just a little easier when you are sewing the pages in okay and the reason I have these magazines yes I definitely learned the hard way because I used I had just like oh, a piece of like towel in between and my I still poked through to the table so yes just take a couple old magazines and use that as your base. And then you can also poke, oh my God, I was off on that one. Why was I off on that one? So I went on this line. So one, two, three. This doesn't have to be perfect. You can eyeball it. I've seen plenty of YouTube videos where the ladies don't mark anything. I'm just trying to, until I, until I do enough, I'll mark everything. Okay, so then you just take like tapestry needles. You can find this at any store like Walmart. And I take the biggest one. And then this is just like thicker thread. This is just like craft jewelry thread that I got at Michaels. This is the thread that I use. Um, 
I was using green, I used it all, so I'm just gonna use the black because it kind of goes with the red. I have red, but I felt like that was red on red did not look good. So just take a bunch of string. All right, and then I can get rid of this book. My least favorite part of sewing, everyone's least favorite part is threading the needle. Especially because this is a little thicker. Oh my goodness. And then my nails don't make this easy. Ugh, come on. I might have to fast forward a lot on this video. Otherwise, this is going to be an hour long video. But I'm almost at the end. Don't drop my needle. Don't drop my needle. Okay. Plus, it's like midnight, so my contacts are bugging me. I can't see as well. Why can I not string this needle? I do this. This is like my fifth book. I, I know this is... There we go. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. There we go. Alright. And then just leave a little excess and so when I sew it I always start with the first and the middle and this let me make sure my this was the original yeah okay so just poke it through the hole see it's already started it makes it a lot easier poke it in this middle hole okay pull your needle through oh my goodness there we go. make sure you have a little excess and then on the outside cover, you should see your hole that you poked earlier. So poke that through. And then it's hard to line it up exactly, so I just do it like that. And then and then find find that older hole older without pulling that out. Oh my goodness. There we go again. Come on. I do not know why my husband put a motion sensor light down here. It is so annoying. All right, pull that through. All right, and then you're gonna go back through the middle hole again. Yep, you're going back through the middle hole again. Oh, let's pull this string. You want this, there we go. You want that string tight. Now we're going back to the top one, okay? And then fill around for your hole. Come on. There you go. Oops. There you go. And then just tuck it under this to give it a little tightness. Make sure your strings are tight on the outside. They are. And now you're just gonna tie these two strings together. I just do a double knot. One, two, and you can trim. Just to, a lot of people like just love having their strings hanging in their books everywhere. So you just trim it a little, however you like it. Or you can make it extra long and, and do charms on it, I don't know. I just haven't gotten to the charms yet. I, everyone loves their charms. So, um, just haven't got that far yet. I wanna be able to put the books on a shelf and I feel like if you have too much charms, that's gonna be difficult. Okay, see, first signature. So now we take our second, blah, 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 signature, more thread. This was, I got this at Michael's. Um, again, coupon, don't ever pay full price at Michael's. Okay. I like Michael's, um, it is, I have a Michaels like two blocks down from my house. So that's, Michaels is my number one choice. I have a Joanne Fabrics that is like six blocks down. But when I'm talking about blocks, I live off of, I don't live directly off of this busy road, but I live like two streets over from this busy road. So it's, it's a busy road. So going six blocks down on this busy road can take 20 minutes depending on traffic. So. Michael's is very convenient. Joanne's Fabric is 
Still should be convenient, but traffic sometimes is a nightmare. Don't really like Joanne fabric as much. Um, and then further down, like 10 blocks down, is Hobby Lobby. Um, I, I, I like Hobby Lobby, but I don't. Um, our, I don't know how other places are. Our Hobby Lobby is extremely busy. And if you've ever, if you haven't been to Hobby Lobby, um, they're very low tech. Like they don't use scanners. Like the employees like key everything in. And so sometimes the checkout lines can take forever. And then they usually only have one cashier working when there's like 20 people in the store, but everyone else doesn't want to check people out. They just want to stop. Very, very annoying. So then you have to wait for them to like break down and ask for help. And you can tell the workers really don't want to be, don't want to check people out. So, so annoying. And so, yeah, I rare, I will only go to Hobby Lobby if I really need something um, that I can't get anywhere else because uh, there is no quick trip in the Hobby Lobby. No quick trip. So, um, I don't know. I mean, the, the, I've never, like, no one's been rude to me, but you can just tell that, like, they're so slow to, like, help. Like, they can, you know, you'll have a cat, you'll have an employee walk by and see, like, people 10 deep in line and she'll instead of thinking oh maybe I should help and check people out instead you'll see her start stalking like one lane over and it's like seriously can't you help get these people out of here it's just frustrating so that's why I don't go to Hobby Lobby lot and because it's like 10 blocks down Michael's is always super quick okay. nope I did, I did the right hole I got to the inside. Alright, let me make sure I was actually, my pages, yeah, my pages are right. I mean, that would be terrible if I sewed something upside down. Wouldn't it be surprising, but it would be terrible. Okay, so here we go. Tuck this over here, and then, and you could like tie it in a bow if you wanted. And there you go. Maybe that knot was too thick, but anyway. Trim the extra. Oop, sorry. Sorry, I hit my tripod. All right, one more signature to go. Make sure this is facing the right way. So, yes, Michael's is my favorite. So, yeah, that's what we have. Michael's, Joanne, and Hobby Lobby. And then there's also, like, it's not, it's like a half hour away. Like if you really need something like jewelry supply, we have a Schaefer's. It's like a mom and pop hobby store. Like it's one of those places that has like the t everything you need for trains and m people who paint m car models, like a hobby store like that. And you know, I don't know if they have scrapbooking stuff because I've just recently got into the scrapbooking, um, but I do make jewelry and sell. And so that's what I'm familiar with, their jewelry supplies. But you know what, now that I'm talking out loud, I, you know what, we kind of need to go and check to see what their scrapbooking supplies are. But they don't really have deals, it's a mom and pop. It's just one of those things that, if you need something unique, like sometimes they would have like a lobster clasp in a bigger size that I needed that just, oh, come on, that Michaels wouldn't have, stuff like that. And I think they have classes and stuff, but so does Michael's. I just don't pay any attention to those. All right. So again, start in the middle. Find my little, pull it through. see that hole oh there it is Sorry. the last one is the hardest because you don't have as much ow, space oh I hope I didn't lose my almost don't have as much space to work with okay so you could make your like signatures a lot closer but you want a little space in between your signature because you're gonna add stuff and hopefully you're gonna make your journal thicker this is the whole thing about junk journals is 
um, add tons of stuff, make it bulky, you know, make stuff stick out. It's okay. It's not supposed to be like a flat, you know, scrapbook where all it was was flat stickers and flat, fo flat, flat photos. You want to kind of give it like bulk. Everyone loves the bulkiness. And I think that's cool because, you know, let you use more of a paper medium, like normally stuff that maybe you would throw away because it wasn't flat, it's, it wouldn't fit perfectly in a, you know, in your scrapbook. Now it's like, you know, anything goes, anything goes. I mean, I've seen people like do buttons and stuff. I haven't got that far, but I, I just, I'm used to like flat papers. So maybe eventually I'll get to that point where my stuff is more of a three, like more like buttons and ribbons and bows and right now all I'm doing is paper, paper, paper. Okay, so then, nope, oh, that one's a little, why is that one a little loose? There we go. Yeah, make sure it's, t I mean, you don't want it too tight where it rips the paper, but you don't want it too loose where your signature is gonna flop about when you're flipping pages, okay? And then, number one thing to do when you're done with your needle, put it back on the card. Because nothing's worse than a lost needle, because you'll always find it with your bare foot. So, put your needle up, take these paper clips off, paper clips off. Yeah, these, I think I got these colored paper clips at the Dollar Tree. We, we also had a Dollar Tree recently built near our house. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. They actually have some scrapbooking stuff too. So, there you go. You have, oh, there I go again. Sorry, seasickness people. Okay, so here's the binding. Doesn't that look cool? The stitches look cool. And then you have your signatures. And so what I was talking about is like, here I have elastic. So I normally loop this elastic through it and then wrap it around. But if you don't want, if, oh, here we go again. When is that, like a 10 minute timer? Okay. If you don't have a grommet tool, just take a piece of ribbon or elastic and just tie it like this and that's how you would close it. So I feel like my husband was lurking, seeing what I'm doing, trying to scare me probably. So anyway, um, flip through real quick, remember. Um, so yeah, here's a, what I'm eventually going to do is I'll cover this with washi tape and then I'll cover this with a scrap, something scrapbooky. Um, or white it out and put my name with a sticker or something, I don't know. So here you go, just flip through, got your pockets. And now this is the point where you would add like, you know, extra stuff. Like say, you know, if you have scrapbooking papers, so like, you know, add pockets and stuff. That's the point where I start adding like little extras. So yeah, doesn't that look cool? So, so much room to write on, so much room to glue stuff in. Glue stick is my new best friend. Um, let's see. I'm just, see, here's even, remember that newspaper from Silver Dollar City. So this book, I'm adding my Silver Dollar City, City mementos. Um, but I have all these extra pages, so all the extra space I will, I'm sure I'm going to get way too much cards and papers and just stuff I collect for the month of December. So the extra that doesn't fit in my other journal, I will add to this journal. So anyway, that is how you make a junk journal. Sorry, this wasn't a quick video. I think after, after I'm all said and done, it's going to be a 60 minute video. But um, a couple people were asking, family members, curious how it works. This is how I do it. And I'm just, I'm loving this book. So anyway, Thanks for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons and I will see you later.